Hi, everybody. I'm here with David Wright. Thanks for being here, David. Thanks for having me, Steve. David's a physique competitor and personal trainer at Fitness for 10 in Carson City. So if you're in Carson City, go say hi to him. We're going to talk about something that's very interesting and is so different for everyone. And everyone is at different places. And we're going to talk about increasing muscle mass. When can you do it? When do you peak? I'm going to tell you when I peaked as far as my muscle mass. David is in his 40s. And you, we talked about this before we turned this on. You have more lean tissue, more muscle mass than you've ever had in your life, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, absolutely. I didn't. Now, but what about if you're 70? What if you're over 50, 60, 70, 80? Can you put on lean tissue? The answer is yes. Can you put muscle on? Yes. And there's two types. What I'm putting on and what anything that I put on would be muscle memory. It's muscle that I've already had. So let me explain that first for me. The profile picture that, that you all see on my social media channels, most of them, I was 24 years old and I weighed about 180 pounds. And in that picture, um, my body fat percentage was about 5%. So I had about nine pounds of fat on my body. That's it at 180 pounds. That was probably my peak. Now, now I'm in my 60s and I weigh less. I weigh five pounds less. I weigh 175 pounds. I'm going to guess, I don't know exactly, but I'm going to guess I'm maybe 14% body fat. Well, guess what? I'm over twice as old as I was in that picture. And I have over twice as much body fat on my body and I weigh less. So can I still make gains and benefits? Yes, I can. Um, but what I'm, and I've put some, some lean tissue, some muscle on my lower body, but I got my hormones right. I'm on TRT. Now, I do have to say, um, being completely open and honest, that picture that you see um, on my profile, I was geared up pretty good. You know, I, I wasn't, you know, throwing the kitchen sink and everything out of butt. I was, I was geared up, you know, no doubt about it. I, I was medicated. <laughs> so now I'm on TRT, but even in my 60s, I can still get results. Now, David has been a little different because your journey has been different. You've peaked now in your 40s, which is probably about where most men and maybe women are going to peak. So tell us about your journey on how you got exactly where you are now. And then I want to come back after I after we hear your story and talk about some of the differences for someone 50, 60, 70 and what the possibilities for the, for what um what kind of possibilities they have. We'll talk about that as soon as we hear your story. Yeah, and so I didn't even, you know, you talked about kind of working out, you know, and training and all that since you're about 15. I didn't start till I was 28 years old. Um, so quite a quite a big difference there in terms of, you know, when when you started, when I started, everybody kind of has a different starting point for different health journeys and getting fit and healthy. And so I started at 28 years old, you know, trying to figure out, okay, how do I, how do I do weightlifting? How do I, you know, what's going to be effective? All the different things, you know, that go through everybody's mind pretty much. Um, you know, and so I've gone through a, a lot of trial and error. There was a lot of times where I said, hey, you know, I don't know if I want to work out anymore because I'm not seeing results, etc." It's been a long time since then, because since then I've learned a lot. Um, of course, becoming a personal trainer because it's a passion of mine. You know, I've been, you know, in the gym for 14 years at this point, been training pretty heavily for the last nine years as a competitor. So I've learned a lot about muscle growth and and you know how all of that works and to your point you know i'm definitely a you know the most lean muscle tissue i've had ever at this point in my life i'm going to be 42 next month so 
Um, you know, when people talk about age, it's like, you know, there's a lot of factors there, but just because you're in your 40s, 50s, 60s, you know, that's not an excuse, you know, and it's not a reason to not try to go to the gym. And for me, it was, you know what, I became a competitor. To your point, there's a lot of looking at the competition world and some people aren't familiar with that, but there are a lot of people who are on a lot of different medications and things like that to help enhance their physiques and, and all that stuff. I've never been one of those people. So it's been harder for me um, per se than some of those folks to get the size that I am. So it also has taken longer uh, for me to get there. So for myself, you know, I've basically since 2019, I've been on TRT as well for actual medical reasons. And, you know, coming from a level, full disclosure, probably about 250 uh, five years ago, which had I not been working out intensely and competing, might have been it next to nothing. Um, you know, and there's a bunch of different reasons that that could have been, but now we've definitely got that leveled out to, you know, a, a normal range for someone my age. And so it's not like one of those situations where it's like, you know, there's all sorts of crazy stuff that's, you know, injecting all these things and all that. It's it's really a hormone balance to where you should be. Um, so you're not at kind of a disadvantage, you're not at uh, a health disadvantage also. And so while I'm here in the gym, you know, some people can, you know, if they have a lot of, uh, you know, enhancing drugs, you know, they could gain all sorts of muscle in a month where I'll gain, you know, a small fraction of that because it's naturally occurring um, because my levels are very, very normal. Um, throughout the board. So for me, it was all about being very consistent, you know, really getting all the understanding that I could. I have a coach that I've had since 2018, I believe it is, off and on when I'm doing shows and even on off season, you know, working with him and on the right way to help build muscle for me. Um, and so it's worked great. So yeah, at this point, I'm at my peak. And my goal really at this point is to kind of continuing growing that that muscle tissue continue competing, um, but in a really healthy way. So that way I can continue doing it longer. So that's where I'm at. Okay. And let me just interject real quick there. A TRT is testosterone replacement therapy. So what you're doing is you're bringing your testosterone back up to a, a, a youthful number to maximize your health. And it's very, very important. You all have doctors out there. You can talk to you. It's very important to get your hormones right, whether you're male or female. Very, very important um, for your overall health, for your heart health, for a whole bunch of things. But you can all talk to your um, physicians. I am affiliated with Royal Medical. They give a spectacular deal. You can get the information or ask a question in the comment section um, if you're interested in that or, or discussing this with a uh, medical practitioner who can write you a prescription, the right prescription to get you to the right level after you've been tested. So you guys know, I talk about it all the time. That is there. It's in the description. It's Royal Medical. There's a phone number and a contact there where you can call and the um, promo code is Vitality1. Um, so um, that being said, um, that's something that's important. Now, Let's talk about someone who's never trained and let's say they're in their 50s, 60s, maybe early 70s or whatever, and they start lifting weights. Now, most, this is just my opinion, okay? I'm not Mr. Scientist. I'm not even a smart guy. I'm just a guy that's been doing this forever. So, um, in my opinion, most people, let's say you start lifting weights when you're 65 and you've never done it. Most of what you're going to gain is muscle memory. Because if you've never touched a weight, you had so much lean body mass. You, you see those kids that are 20 years old and they're built pretty good and they don't do anything. They don't lift weights or any of that. Or maybe they ride their bike or they work outside or whatever. But they're built pretty good, but they don't lift weights. Well, by the time they're 65, they're going to lose some of that. Now, I think if you've never lifted weights and you start, I'm just throwing a number out there in your 60s. I'm in my 60s. Um, you start to lift weights. You're going to get that muscle back that you had when you were 21. And I, I'm interested to hear your opinion, too. And everybody out there, 
put comments in the comment section. Give me your opinion on this, if you've done this or how it relates to you. So now I'm going to gain that that lean tissue back. Now it's hard to get as lean as you were when you were 20, 21, when you're 60, even if you do get put on more muscle. So I'm going to gain that back. That's muscle memory, but I never really exercised my muscles. So there's not a lot of muscle memory there. So I think you can go beyond the muscle mass that you had when you were young, if you've never touched a weight and you start lifting in your 60s, I think you can actually put muscle on. And maybe you can relate this, uh, David, to some of your clients, some of the results they have gotten. But for me, there's no way I'm going to go beyond that picture when I was 24 years old. I will never look like that again. I will never have that much muscle mass and be that lean. But I don't know. I think I'm doing okay for a guy in his 60s. But everyone's different. You all get different results. And so tell us about some of your clients or some of your experience with this on, on the results or some of the things that people have accomplished Um as they've been older, maybe someone who's never exercised before, what's happened? Yeah, so there's been quite a few clients who either have never exercised before, or it's been a really, really long time for some folks, um, or the type of exercise they've done, they've never done it in a gym. You know, there's a whole lot of scenarios, but um, you know, some of these folks who come in and they've never really been in a gym before, and they're in their 50s, 60s, I have some folks uh, currently now that are in their 80s even. Um, and, and so they're coming in to you know, get fit in various different ways. But what tends to happen in those situations is, of course, you know, we go through a thorough evaluation with them here for personal training and get to know what their needs are and everything. But once we start training with these folks and really start narrowing down you know, the things that, you know, not only what folks are capable of, if they have any kind of... Um, you know, injuries or impairments or any kind, we help kind of work on that or work around it, depending on the case. But what tends to happen is, you know, I've had a client where, you know, couldn't lift their arm very high because they've had shoulder injuries. I think in this case, it was a shoulder surgery because of an injury in the past. And so, you know, they couldn't lift their arm very high. So that, of course, impedes a lot of different things that I would take advantage of. And you probably would, Steve, you know, that we can reach and do these things. And this person can only reach with this arm so high. And so, you know, we did different exercises, not a whole lot of strength at first, but really mobility. Let's get that instead of here, let's get that to here. That's all we're trying. This is it right here. And then we get it to here. Let's get it to here. And so let's keep making these differences. And then at the end of, you know, I think in this case, it was like a three month time frame. So it takes a while because you're not going to just crank that arm up there and see how far you can go. So you can injure it more, but you know, that arm has, you know, this much range of motion now. And so now I'm more comfortable as a trainer saying, okay, we're safe to do different things where we can raise stuff over our head, stuff that we take advantage of every day that we can do until we can't do it anymore. And so when we do those things, it's like some of it's about strength and building the lean muscle, which I've had that as well. People say, gosh, I can get out of bed so much easier because my legs don't hurt anymore. You know, I've, I've, those band exercises you have me do at every training three days a week, man, those light up my legs every time. But you know what? It's helped so much with me being able to just get out of bed in the morning, um, you know, or being able to walk longer distances because my hips don't hurt. Hips are a huge thing that I hear um, with my clients, especially my older clientele. So, you know, we work on strengthening those hips through various different exercises because that's extremely important. Um, everything's important, but Again, we talked about priorities in another video. A lot of times that's a priority for me with older clients because I know that that's an area that can be very problematic if we don't have the muscle there to support not only your bottom half of your body, but everywhere because the hips are important. So those types of situations where it's like, okay, let's work on those hips. Let's let's do some safe squats for you. Let's do some different exercises to, to get those muscles moving you know, getting them longer and contracting so they're used to moving. And then, hey, you know what? Once we can safely do that, let's let's add some weight to that if it's safe for that particular person. So then we gain that 
lean muscle mass. Because if you haven't, to your point, if you haven't worked out ever, you know, you even start coming in here doing calisthenics type workouts that you're using your own body weight, that's going to gain that lean muscle because you never had that before. You had, you know, the basic level of lean muscle to be able to support you, to balance you so you could live and walk around, but you didn't have really anything additional. So when you come in here to the gym, you're doing all those things, you're moving around and all that, but now you're adding that additional piece of I'm pushing weight, pulling weight, whatever the case might be. So we're building that lean tissue. And to your point, Steve, you can, you can build a tremendous amount of muscle. Now, again, not going to be Arnold Schwarzenegger, but what you're going to do and you're going to see is you're going to see that you're gaining some strength, you know, possibly even some size in your, you know, your arms or your legs or whatever whole body, um, because you never had that before. You never had that, that muscle memory before, because it's not like you went to the gym for 30 years and then stopped and came back. If that were the case, Hey, you know what? You had muscle before most likely. And, you know, you'll start seeing some of that again for sure. But if you've never worked out before, your body hasn't experienced that. So it's like, hey, what's going on here? We got to start building this lean tissue to support this new level of exercise that you're doing. And it's it's tremendous when I see people who get those results and feel stronger, feel better. And then a lot of those things, you know, that, that plague us every day are a little bit less or sometimes they're gone or, or whatever. People go to their doctor, their blood works better. And they're like, hey, you know, you're, you can come off of your blood pressure medicine or, hey, your diabetes is better, whatever the case might be. There's so many benefits to it. Yeah, you put that so well, David. And just so you all know, when we talk about muscle memory, we're talking about regaining um, muscle or abilities that you previously had. So when you start lifting, when you're older, you're going to regain uh, some of that. But like I said, I think you can go beyond and make even uh, have even better results if, if you haven't done this before. And the biggest oh, yeah. thing about, especially if you're 50, 60s, 70s, it's the quality of life. And I could kind of tell when you were expressing that, that y I think it's really cool too. And I can tell that you think it's cool that people start to improve their quality of life. They're going, you know what? It's easier for me to do this now. I couldn't do this before. And now I can. And I feel better. And I breathe better. And I move better. And my balance is better. And everything's better. That's when someone who's in their 60s who starts exercising gets addicted to it because there's going to be a, yes, you're smiling now. There's going to be a huge increase in your quality of life, right? Absolutely. All right. So um, David is a competitor. If you guys want to follow him on social media, how do they do that, David? So they can find me, uh, progress pictures, contest prep updates, that kind of stuff, and kind of the journey where I came from, where I'm at now, um, on Instagram at David Wright underscore fitness. And then there's a personal training page I just started not long ago, personal training tips, boot camps, things like that, at, um, excuse me, at Wright Fitness Training on Instagram. All right. Thanks for being with us, David. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks, Steve.